Earth is the heart. We know this. After all, Earth is an anagram for heart. And many of the ancients thought of the Earth as the center of the universe, just like the heart is the center of our electromagnetic field. But what does this mean in relation to what we would perceive as higher or lower realms? That's what this video is about. If we could view Earth from a hyperdimensional lens, outside of this space and time, what we would observe is Earth being sandwiched between an equal amount of higher and lower realms. The Vedic texts, for example, maintain that there are seven higher and seven lower realms. The heavenly planes, we are told, correspond to that which is pure, all-knowing, or existing in the presence of a divine light, a godlike force. Conversely, the hellish planes act as an opposite paradigm, planes where the impure, damned, materialistic, or parasitic beings reside. This is clear in the archetypes of angels versus demons, the heavenly versus the hellish. But what if I told you these archetypes, this division, this split, is the result of dualism on the earth plane, at the center? Well, many of you might reject this idea at first. After all, most religious and occult schools maintain this division between what is light and what is dark. The hermetic concept of as above, so below is usually misunderstood. What I mean is, the above and below are manifestations of a dualistic consciousness exhibited on the earth plane, on that singularity point. As above, so below. What seems to be higher is actually the same imbalance as what seems to be lower. I've said this before. When we observe the toroidal structure of ourselves and the earth plane, we notice that the center, or the heart, is the zero point which all other energy centers, or other planes, pull from. This gives us the simple truth. All energy in the so-called higher or lower realms originate in the heart, which macrocosmically is the North Pole, the center of the toroid. I mean, just look at it. All energy centers above and below require a pulling from the origin point, from that zero point. So when we speak about ascension in relation to canceling out dualism and a mindset which needs tension to resolve itself, we're actually dealing with coming back to the Emerald Heart space. This is not only a metaphor, this is also a literal transformation of this realm. The singularity is another name for ascension, because that which is above and below shall be merging, both within and without. No longer do we require this destructive division, which requires an opposing force to contrast itself to. In Eastern New Age and some occult schools of thought, it's common to place a lot of emphasis on activating the upper chakras like the third eye, like the crown. However, knowing what we just discussed, this is pulling away from the heart. Home is where the heart is. We don't have this saying for no reason. So when there was so much emphasis on going above, 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 what does that lead to? Well, the very imbalances that many of us have felt in the so-called spiritual community. There's nothing inherently wrong about these energy centers, but ultimately they do, just like the earthly structure, pull from that zero point. So why emphasize going up and up and up into this space where you're just going to be forced to come back down and cycle between the above and below? I say stay in the heart, and of course we know this, right? Home is where the heart is, that's the emerald dream time of the goddess. And when you look at everything through the lens of the heart, you can't go wrong. These archetypes represent the focus on a single polarity at vibratory levels above and below the innate range of our experience, leading to fragmentation and submission rather than wholeness. I'm not saying heaven and hell are literal places. These are overarching embodiments of the dualistic good-bad paradigm which has kept us in a polarized loop. 
heaven becomes a place of judgment and rigid dogmatic belief, a construct that is void of original creative thought, because one must bend themselves in the direction of everything that is deemed righteous and correct. And hell often becomes the repository of everything that is suppressed by a humanity operating at a tiny fraction of its true potential. It's where we go to be ashamed and punished. So with heaven we have judgment, and with hell we have punishment, and they end up being the same thing. This is a reflection of the absurdity of dualism. Both sides of the coin are coming from the same place of separating oneself from a unified perspective. Because we decided to inhabit a dualistic toroidal structure and overlay, we have been in the cycle of birth and death in time. Yes, time is emitted by the toroidal field, which tore us apart from an infinite consciousness into one which ebbs and flows. To pair this with our conceptualization of the net of magnetics, what comes up must come down, and what comes down must come back up. Therefore, the net of magnetics actually catches everything that has an imbalance. Every expression is therefore felt on this earth plane and has been felt during this experience in what we would call purgatory in order to get back to that singularity point. Because once again, if something cannot be seen without you, then it will remain within. Living souls have the full capacity to tap into their divinity without being in this tug of war, without having these black and white checkerboard contrasting ideas which require each other to exist. We're stepping away from that, my family. We are stepping into the heart space, and that's what the North Pole is. The microcosm is the macrocosm. So we're actually talking about the same thing. We're just fusing together in singularity all that seems so high and above our reach as puny humans and that which seems so corrupt and parasitic that it inflicts a type of victimhood on us. Canceling these two perspectives out is what we call singularity. That's the ascension, baby. And when that is achieved in critical mass after this purgatorial process is achieved for the finite game players who have projected themselves into this temporary construct, then we will essentially wake up back in the heart space, unharmed, unscathed, and with the knowingness that that division can never be resolved. And therefore, we witness the expansion of the universe. When we descended into matter as spirit, if you can imagine this, this was a very new experience, a unique experience, because after coming from a dimensional space where there isn't this kind of physical experience that is hyper solidified, it's only natural that we would feel slightly or maybe monstrously imprisoned by this new ordeal. And if you look back at your own life and even imagine the process you've gone through on this wheel of samsara, of birth and death, then you can actually imagine you have been refining the ability to merge spirit with matter. But first, of course, when you descend, and it's not really a descent, it's more a, a new creation you're funneling yourself into. When you descend into a material realm like this, of course, it's going to take a while to learn the ropes and have the ability to finally cause that singularity. And that is indeed what we're doing. Everything must return back to that zero point, that hard space, by definition. Energy cannot be maintained in that as above, so below fashion forever. So when we talk about this being a holographic matrix, which the living souls have put themselves into, as a game, as an experiment, and as a learning lesson, we're simply talking about a cosmic showdown that has resulted from that very polarized division. And it's just about to have run its course. So this holding space and all of its teachings, all of its laws are about to transform and not even be relevant to our upcoming experience. And that's why right now we are shedding 
everything that duality offers because all it offers is division. Every situation you've gone through, every person in your life, every trauma, every breakthrough and breakdown has been a part of a divinely orchestrated movie meant to guide you towards the reclamation of a balanced perspective. A series of events purging you of the very experiences you've been living. It seems paradoxical, but every step you've taken has brought you closer to the emerald light through suffering. After all, we must live out our imbalances in order to stare them in the face. By simply being in this temporary holding space, you've been undergoing the process of alchemy, of transmutation, and you didn't even know it. The common idea of spiritual growth is that there are certain principles of purity one must adhere to. These concepts of good, of righteousness, still rely on the opposing concepts of bad, of evil, of spiritual impurity. This is all a farce. You are the power and always have been, and there is nothing more relevant to your growth than your experiences. We call these principles of purity the false light because they are still operating within the realm of dualism. In the age of duality, spirituality was seen as separate and distinct from physicality. But the unveiling has been quickening, and now we know. The spiritual and the physical have always been intertwined, and the separation of the two were only observed due to our own inability to reconcile the shadows we chose to dive into once upon a time. You hold the keys to your own cell, and you've been slowly unlocking your own infinite nature as you wade through the bullshit, even if you haven't been conscious of it. What a relief, right? Every true aspect of reality has a counterpart in another, quote, higher existence. Meaning, the fact that the living souls exist here means there's an upgraded version of ourselves dreaming this, quote, lower version. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. I love all of you. Take care.